Hey guys, what's going on? It's Louie Louie here and welcome to a brand new VOD review. I've got a really good one for you guys today. Um, this was sent to me by Kenny. We're going to be taking a look at one of Jay's matches. He's the black guy on the center of the table. He's about 2000 level and he's playing against uh, Martin Del Vecchio. I do apologize if I'm pronouncing that wrong, who's about 2075. Um, so yeah, this was sent to me by Kenny. I'm going to be taking a look at it uh, from the perspective of Jay to see if there are some things that I can point out or tips that I can give. Um, I do apologize that it's been quite a while since I last released a video. I've been pretty busy with my real work and um, school as usual. So table tennis um, as well as the YouTube videos have kind of taken a back seat. Um, but hopefully I have some more coming out in the very near future. Um, I just played my first tournament in a very long time a couple weeks ago and it gave me a little bit more motivation to start the channel again and also start playing again. Um, so hopefully I'll have some more videos out. Um, be sure if you have some videos that you want to submit that you uh, post them in my Discord channel. Um, and I'll post a link for the Discord channel in the description and in the comment section so that you can take a look. Um, but if you want to just chat with me, have questions, literally anything, just join that Discord channel. That's where everything happens. Um, and I'll link that below. But yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the video. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, once again, I'm going to be reviewing this from Jay's perspective, the guy on the closer end in the blue shirt. Uh, so first couple of minutes or so, I'm probably not going to say much. And then as I um, kind of watch and analyze, I'll have some comments to go along with that. So yeah, let's go ahead and just start watching. Okay, um, so a couple comments right off the get-go. Um, and yeah, this is, um, you guys can probably tell, this is a little bit of a higher level match. Both players rated over 2,000. Um, so clearly two very strong players here. Um, but I actually want to go back to the beginning and take a look at these serve returns. Um, so Martin was playing a reverse pendulum serve. Um, this serve almost always needs to be flipped, even if it's light side under. The push, when you push this serve, it's one of the hardest serves to push and keep short. If you push it short, it's probably going to be high. Um, so you end up, if you want to keep the push low, you end up having to push it long. So if you continue to push this serve, he's always going to have that um, third ball attack. But I really like the way you blocked there. You jammed him on his forehand, pushed him a little bit deeper into the corner, and then switched uh, wide. Um, that was very solid play. And then the second return, you actually did flip, um, which I very much liked as well. But I wanted to point out a small mechanic on the back end. Um, when you're in these quick back end to back end rallies, and you can probably see on my camera, you don't want to be moving your elbow like this. Um, so the elbow does rotate when you're in the back end to back end rally, but it's not a rotation this way. This distance should stay the same, and it's a rotation up and forwards where the head of your racket should be pointing where you want the ball to go when you finish the shot. This will give you a little bit more topspin rhythm. It'll also make the recover, recovery easier. Um, so it'll put some more pressure on your opponent. Um, I really like your two serves as well. Um, so both serves, heavy, heavy underspin. Um, you're going to get a lot of good third ball opportunities. First backhand was beautiful. Uh, and then for some reason, he pushed long to your backhand again, and you weren't ready for it. Default ready position against this type of serve, you should be ready to loop backhand. Um, no matter where you serve, you should be ready for backhand. And you, you got away with the point there, but um, again, you should have been ready to loop that ball. Yeah, not a bad return. Um, challenging the back end, your push is low, and you're ready to block after. And that's a better return there as well. Good flip deep on the table, and you're ready to follow up with the second back end. Yeah, same thing on the serve. These are these are good players. Um, you're playing against a strong opponent. Even if you serve wide short to the forehand, you can't just sit on your own forehand. Um, back end loop should still be your first idea because it's much easier to react to your forehand than to set up for your forehand and react to your backhand. So first idea should be backhand loop and then react to everything else. Um, but then also make sure you're watching. Just watch his paddle. Um, you should know where the ball is going before it, uh, before he hits it. Nice try. Um, 
On the counter, kind of similar to the backhand, you kind of are pushing forwards. I'd like to see a little bit more elbow rotation. Um, just overall rotation. Very good serve returns though. Um, you're taking advantage of the fact that he's serving topside. Um, just a gentle flip there to open up the rally, nothing too fancy, um, but he gets the job done. Really, really like that type of return. Nice. Yeah, same. Um, he's not really putting you under any pressure with the attack. No reason to change on the return. Um, so yeah. I have seen a few balls where you should have been looping on the back end though. So that's the biggest thing right now. Um, I just wish I was seeing you open with the back end a little bit more. That's nice. That's yeah, smooth. that's very good. Um, so good, solid opening loop. Um, and then nice follow up with the rallies. Um, once you get three, four shots into the point, I'd love to see a little bit more rotation. You're still um, punching a little bit on both the back end and forehand. So your opening shot is spinny, you're rotating your elbow, and then you're following that up with a punch. The punch really should only be used against a stronger top spin ball. If your opponent's not really putting you under much pressure, you don't want to punch. You lose the stability in your shot, you want to rotate. Uh, rotate your elbow, um, especially on the back end. Like the way you rotate your elbow on that opening loop, um, that's the best way to generate topspin. You should continue generating topspin like that um, throughout the point. No, no reason to stop with the topspin, it just adds unnecessary risk. Skip forwards a little bit. Yeah, same thing. Make sure if you serve long, you're ready for him to loop. Um, if you serve long, you can't be setting up for an underspin ball. Uh, strong players are going to loop those balls. Nice, that's beautiful. Um, that is like perfect, no comment. Very well played. Yep. Nice, yeah, that's very solid. Uh, very, very solid play. The um, first game, I know I'm nitpicking on a couple things here or there, but overall, very solid. Um, I like the opening loop. Just wish that on those follow up loops, when you're in the top spin rally, um, the form was a little bit more compact. Keep your paddle up, rotate the elbow instead of punching everything. You can mix in the punch and the block sometimes, but the primary, like the default, the default shot should be a rotation. And then the follow-up, maybe like a few points later, a few shots later you can punch, but um, that first shot should be, um, and second shot should be a rotation. On the forehand, you had a couple of balls that came out wide to your forehand and you kind of tried to almost slap it like a counter slap. Same thing there, I just wish I'd seen a little bit more rotation. Uh, but strategically you're playing well, I can tell you're a very smart player. Um, your angles are all correct, you're um, switching when you need to. Um, but there it is again, that, that's the biggest thing. Just both sides, forehand and backhand, too much punching. When you're countering, it doesn't even have to be a big swing, it just needs to have some rotation. Um, and that in itself will produce enough spin to put your opponent under some pressure. But the flat shot against heavy top spin, I mean he's a good player, he's spinning the ball up. That flat shot's going to miss out more than it lands, um, and you, the only way to consistently counter that type of loop is with a counter of yourself. You can't, you can't um, be slapping those balls. Not bad, not bad. Um, great idea. You, you went for the counter there. A little bit uncomfortable. Um, the biggest thing I'm seeing right there. Really good serve. Really, really nice variation. And if you're a lower level player watching this, you should pay attention to what um, Jay is doing. He's serving heavy underspin, but he's not just serving to the same place, setting up the same thing. Sometimes it's to the back end. Sometimes it's short to the forehand. Sometimes it's long. And that variation gives you so many opportunities because your opponent can't sit on your serve. Um, so they're always going to be slightly surprised by whatever comes. Um, and that's something that I wish I saw more. Nice, solid play there, good push, good block. Uh, you knew exactly what you wanted to do and you executed. And that's another thing that you see at these higher levels that you don't necessarily see at the lower levels. Um, and this last point was a perfect example of it. Um, he knew what he wanted to do before this point even happened. He had the, the plan in mind. Um, he was going to push long to the back end and then block. Oh, it was this point maybe? Yeah. He knew right away after he pushed that he was going to block. Uh, and then just play stable. So 
this wasn't like just a sudden reaction. You have the plan in place, and so it makes the point a lot easier because you already know what's coming. Um, try not to be backing up as you play that um, loop. Make sure you're on your toes. Um, just small stuff, simple stuff. And something that will help with the counter as well um, is just your balance. If you're on your heels constantly, it's so hard to play an aggressive counter loop. If you're on your toes, it's pretty easy to play off the balance. Just a quick, compact um, counter loop. Yeah, solid strategy. I, I like what I'm seeing. It's a good long push to the back end. If he loops, you block him down. If he pushes, you loop him off. Yeah, really solid. Um, Nice. Not bad. Um, you won the point there. You're gonna get punished for that sort of play at higher level. You pushed, you looped, he blocked, you blocked his block, and let him right back into the point. Why? Um, his form's a little big, so you got away with blocking him down, but there's no reason to block that block. You loop, he blocks, you should be looping. Nice. Uh, because that's kind of just putting the point at his mercy. If he's got a little bit of a better loop, he wins that point every time. A little bit of a missing on the serve, it looks like there. Uh, happens to everybody. Yeah. Falling away as you're looping, and also not finishing your form quite enough. Um, as a right-handed player on the forehand loop, your paddle should be finishing by your left eyebrow. Um, nice when you point. finish that shot, it should be finishing up here, not, not down by your shoulder. Uh, you're just losing some topspin when you do that. Yeah. Alright, so at this point, He's starting to catch on that you're pushing him here. He's pivoting. Um, he's playing a little bit more stable. He's attacking more. Um, so at this point, this is where you want to mix in some variation. Um, this could be the time where you push short for the first time. Bring him in and then try to loop against his... Uh, he'll probably pop it up because he hasn't seen the short push yet. Or if you catch him pivoting, this would be a great time to just push long to the forehand. Challenge the forehand, show me what you got, and then you can counter him down. Um, but at this point, looping or pushing here again might be a little bit risky. Right idea. Um, on the backhand loop, a little bit too much sideways motion. You can see your paddle kind of finishes out to the side here. Um, should be a little bit more forwards. Um, but just a little bit of a miss hit. Your backhand is very solid, um, so I don't want to get too much into it. Your opening backhand is very solid. But yeah, um, those backhand to backhands. Um, against topspin. A little bit more compact and a little bit punchy. A little bit less punchy because against a spinny player, a higher level player, um, that punch is just not going to work. You, you need to have the, the topspin shot. Let's go forwards a little bit. I'm going to watch that one more time. Yeah, so... Um, a much weaker push there than your original pushes. It was almost like a um, just get the ball on the table push. Make sure even on those shots nice, where you're, nice. um, your opponent played a good shot, he surprised you, you're trying to surprise, um, just survive. Still focus on your placement, give the ball as much quality as you can. Um, something else I've noticed is when he pushes here, you sometimes lean um, and play your back end from the middle ball. And then it puts you out of position for the forehand, still falling back. Um, if you find that happening a lot, it might be worth playing a few more of these middle shots with the forehand. Um, it might it might be easier. It's kind of a preference thing, but yeah, you're, you're very late. Very late on that forehand a lot of the time. Um, and something that I can kind of show on the camera, the transition from backhand loop to forehand has to be very compact. Um, so you finish your backhand loop here, and then you should just be bringing your paddle out to your forehand here to go forwards. If you play your backhand loop, drop your paddle down, take a step back and then start your forehand from here, you're going to be late every time. You're forced to play flat, you're probably going to hit the edge of your paddle. It has to be here and then from this point straight down um, to your forehand so you can follow up. Um, compact and quick. Um, a, a powerful shot doesn't have to be a big shot. You just have to swing harder, but it can still be compact. Right. Yeah. Uh, Don't rely on it though. Don't rely on it. Um, he's been stepping around a lot, so that's the perfect time to play that type of push. And now I would like to see... Uh, he might swim topside here, but... Okay, yeah, so 
Um, if he does continue to serve under spin, this is where I'd like to see you mix in some short pushes. Um, in my opinion, that's the biggest thing that separates 2000 from 2200. Um, 2000 can loop and um, open as good as a 2200. A 2200 also has the short game. They have the short pushes, the flips, um, a little bit more finesse. Um, so I think that's a really, really big area for improvement here. Um, if you watch some, some of the top, um, not professional, but like semi-professional players, um, they can push a topspin serve short, um, top side. Um, doesn't matter where it is, they can still push it short and low double bounce and prevent a strong opponent from attacking and just give themselves those opportunities. Um, and it's something that can really separate you um, Jay, and, and improve your level. That's it, Jay, right there. That's it. Yeah. Uh, got away with that there. You had a great serve. He was surprised. He pushed back, and that was a really passive loop. Um, you got away with it, but I would have liked to see a little bit more stability, um, confidence on the attack. Still, still leaning back a little bit um, as you play the backhand. Your feet have to be planted throughout that shot. Um, when you finish your shot, of course, you can move, but feet need to be planted as you're playing the backhand loop. Very late. Uh, very late on that return. Um, on the foreheads in general, most of your timing is late. And part of it is because your form is a little bit too big. Um, it's, it's actually a lot too big. Your, your paddle shouldn't be dropping below the height of the table unless you're looping underspin. If you're looping topspin, the paddle should never drop below the table. Yes! There you went back a little bit, kind of played into your sweet spot, but even there you're late. Um, it kind of just came to your paddle. Um, I would love to see the paddle just a little bit higher there. Great idea. A little bit too much extension on the flip. Um, so it's so important, the distance between your elbow and your body doesn't really change throughout a flip, it can't extend this way. It has to rotate. Um, that's what gives you the top spin and the stability. If you push out, the shot's going to miss out. Um, and it makes it a little bit more difficult to play. Something else I've noticed is all of your back end openings, they're great. Um, your back end opening, it looks like it's your best shot. Um, beautiful technique, very smooth, but you're playing it to the same spot every time. He's blocking it, he's forcing you into the rally. And you're clearly uncomfortable in the topspin rally. So you should be trying to put the point away quicker. Um, open open yes! to the forehand. Yep. Um, open your back into the forehand. Open it to the middle. Um, open it deep to the corner. Um, if you're just kind of playing to the general spot of this area every time, it forces these rallies and then um, you're a little bit more uncomfortable. Yeah. Yep, yep. Right idea, you got lucky uh, because that push was poor execution. It was high uh, and shallow. It needs to be a lot deeper. Uh, again, surprised by a push to your back end. That should be your number one shot. Um, that should be the number one shot that you're ready for. Um, you serve underspin, default, um, ready for back end loop. Anything else you can react to. Uh, and then again, with that back end loop, just I'd love to see if you played with the same strategy because you're getting the third ball and loop down the line, or loop to the middle, or loop extremely deep into the corner. It doesn't need to be to the same place every time. Yeah, so you found a serve that makes your opponent so uncomfortable. Um, even though it's a long serve, he doesn't like it, he's pushing it almost every time. You know what you're getting, and then you're basically just playing right into his strength. Um, and letting him switch you out wide. He's, right he's exploiting your forehand at this point. Um, that backhand loop, you need to vary it a little bit. If not, then try some more variation. Yes! Yeah. Again, there, a higher player, a higher level player is going to punish that shot. You got away with it there, but um, I, I don't like the slapping. Should, should be going for spin in these top spin rallies. Not bad. Good low push. Make sure the second that you push long, you realize your push is long, you're back and you're ready to block or counter. You can't push long and stay in ready to loop an underspin ball against a high level player um, ready for them to loop once you play that. And then if they do push back to you, it's like a, um, yes! a three point. You can just put that away. Nice. Ready for the loop, much better placement and you win the point right away.
Now I'd mix up the serve again, maybe go to the back inside, try to get that back end loop again. Nice. nice. Yeah, that's Let's good. Go. And then if you did get that opportunity to loop again, now you can't loop to the same place. You loop to the um, forehand corner, you loop to the middle, and then drag the ball back into the back end. But yeah, at this point, you've only given him kind of one look on your backhand. He knows where it's going, and now he's figuring out how to counter it, um, how to play against it. A little bit of hesitation on the return there. Uh, and no rhythm when you got ready to serve. Um, if, if you miss uh, like a, a stupid shot like that, um, walk around for a second, take some time. Another thing that I've noticed, uh, and you guys are both over 2,000, so um, this, this is a tournament match. You should be taking your towel breaks um, every six points, so at 3-3, 6-6, 9-9. Whenever, whenever it happens, you should be taking your towel breaks. Um, give, your ch uh, give yourself a chance to reset. Think about what you want to do. Don't go into a point with no game plan. You should know how you're going to serve, what are the couple of returns you can do against that serve, and how am I going to follow up. And if you play... 22 points in a row or whatever in a game um, and you don't take a single towel break it's just continuous it's it's impossible to think for that long um, you have to take some time uh, especially after an unforced error like that don't just pick up the ball and serve again you're still going to be tilted from the last point walk around a little bit take your time make sure you come fully set before you serve um, and think about the point before you play it Calm down. Great recovery, nice. And that's something as well I wish, um, again, you guys are both higher level players. Um, you go for those net balls. If you're a lower level player who's watching many net balls that your opponent gets, lucky balls are returnable. You just have to go for them. Um, and you'll probably win the point more times than you lose it. Ah, too much hesitation. Um, same mistake as last time. Uh, make sure you know what you want to do. Even if you miss, just go for something. Don't don't overthink it. Simple serve. Another thing I've noticed is your right leg tends to drift forwards too much on your back end. Um, so your your or in other words, your left leg falls back. If you're like miles away from the table, maybe that's okay. But close to the table in the quick back end to back end rallies. At the very most, your leg should be even. If not, left leg needs to be forwards just a little bit. Um, one, it'll help with your transition to the forehand. With your right leg forwards, that's also going to make you extremely slow. Um, your weight's going to be on your heels. You're never going to be in time for that forehand. With your left leg forwards, you'll transition to that forehand much easier. Um, but right leg should never, ever be forwards close to the table when you're playing back into back end. That's called... Uh, I like to call that chicken play. Um, that's something that you see not in practice matches, but in tournaments when it gets close. Um, and suddenly you're scared to miss. But you still have to go for your shots. If you miss, you miss. But lose missing your shots, don't lose because you were scared to play them. It's kind of chicken play again. Um, push was a little bit higher. You're just trying to keep the ball on the table. It worked out for you, but you need to go for your shots. Yeah. Um, nerfs. Uh, tournament nerfs, which is common. I, I get it too. It used to be one. Um, I won't lie, it still is one of my biggest problems, just nerves in tournaments. Um, play 200 points above your level in practice and then can't execute in tournament. Um, part of it is not being a chicken. Uh, you have to go for these, these types of shots even when it's close and there may be money or rating on the line. Nice. Well played. Really well played under pressure. Uh, and I'm not going to even touch on the mechanical issues at this point. This is more, at this point in the game, it's strategy um, and shot selection. And who can play better under pressure? And you're both kind of choking a little bit at this point. If you uh, if you push here, you win the point right away. Oh, um, so yeah, he was expecting that ball, and he was ready to step around. I will say this is kind of off topic. But the reverse pendulum serve is the riskiest, easiest to miss serve um, in tournament situations, just because um, of the mechanics of it. Um, so it's definitely the most mechanically difficult serve to execute under pressure. Yeah. You take it. You take it. Good positive return. 
Uh, I can tell you're both playing nervously at this point. Nice. Well played. Very well played. Not afraid to go for your shots. Um, good angles. Nice switch at the end of the point. Uh, again, I'm not going to really talk about the mechanics of the point just because it doesn't really matter in this type of situation. Nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. My question is, why did you find that return now at 12-11? Uh, uh, great return. You won the point. Uh, honestly, you played much better than your opponent those last few points. He was nervous. You were nervous too, but you went for your shots and it worked out. Uh, but now, um, you found that return. You need to use it more this game. Not just when you're flipping, but when you're looping your back end. Wide to the forehand. This guy loves to pivot. Um, and you should be exploiting that. Um, if you're not comfortable blocking or countering, then um, let him pivot and push wide to the forehand. He'll give you such a weak move. And again, aside from that, I'd just like to see more short game. None of, none of you have even attempted a short push. Um, not, not a single short push the entire match. Also, nice. not many short there. Um, could play a part of it, but... Uh. Yeah. Good. Nice. Solid placement deep in the corner. That is your bread and butter shot. Really smooth mechanic. Um, I really like that backhand. Playing well here. Yeah. And your opponent's very clearly um, very nervous right now. Yeah. He's tensed up. You're playing exactly the way you want to play when your opponent's nervous. Push long. Show me what you got. Can you even loop my push anymore? Because you're nervous. Too punchy. Oh. So, kind of similar mistake. Just keep the paddle up, small rotation. Um, it'll be easier to play stable, put your opponent under pressure, you'll be quicker switching to the forehand, and it opens up more angles for you. But I, I don't like the, um, the punch. And if, if you are going to punch or block, it should still be smaller. It should just be from here forward. It shouldn't be like this giant swing. Yeah, that, that should definitely be a forehand. Um, or if you are moving to your right to play a backhand, this is the perfect shot to play out to the forehand. It's the perfect shot to play right there, and you'll win the point. And this is where slapping is so risky. You're in pressure. When you slap a ball, the timing has to be perfect. When you spin, you can afford to miss it. The spin will save you. It will keep the ball on the table. But if you're slapping, your timing has to be so good. And under pressure, it's impossible. Um, yeah, so I'd just like to see a little bit more topspin. He's sitting on that back end and then he's switching to your forehand. He's exploited it a couple times. Um, you have to change something up. You have to loop to the forehand, to push short. Um, transition to your forehand quicker because you know he's going there. Um, that was good. That was good placement. Nice, nice loop down the line. But you can't keep feeding into his strategy or he's just going to exploit it. Yeah, same mistake, um, and also just not enough variation. Um, another thing, and I know I'm pointing out a lot here, this is probably going to be like a two-hour VOD review at this point, uh, um, but he's serving you long, and you haven't really looped his long serve. And I get that you, maybe it's a tournament, you're uncomfortable, and your return is stable. That's fine. It's, he's not really punishing it. You're serving long to him, and he's not really punishing it, um, so it's fine. But it's a loopable serve. Like if, I, if I'm in this situation, I've probably looped 50% of his serves. Um, and just opening that serve probably gives me more opportunities um, to find ways to win the point. Yeah, yeah jammed on the forehand. I like the idea. Um, if you're getting a loop to your forehand, this shot should never be blocked. Um, this ball has to be counter looped. Um, you counter that, you win the point. But that shot cannot be blocked. Yes. And 
when you're down like this, um, I like to see like quote unquote ballsy serves too. Challenge him, give him a new look. Um, you'll be surprised in pressure situations. Um, you can get a free point. No. Um, that's not exactly a, a legal towel break, but uh, glad that you're taking your time. Uh, another thing, you should have used your timeout a couple points throughout this game. If you're in the fifth game and you get out, I, I call it a three point rule. Once the deficit reaches three points or more, whether that's 3 0, 4 1, um, 5 2, um, it, um, generally you don't want to um, take a timeout on a towel break. Um, but like any, any three point deficit, that's your time to take a timeout. Um, because at that point, they can really take off with the momentum. Ooh! Really good play under pressure. Um, I do like the way you play under pressure. Very calm and collected. Uh, aside from a couple moments, you don't seem too afraid to play your shots. That's what I call a shot with no purpose. You pushed to return his loop, or excuse me, you pushed to return his serve and didn't think ahead as to what he'll do against your push. Um, you have to think two, three shots in advance every point. Um, even when it's close like this and you're scared to miss, uh, it's no exception. You, you have to think about what you're doing. I'm a little bit nervous at the end there. Um, but honestly, um, I saw a lot of good. Um, very, very good back end. Um, strategy itself was solid. You have soft hands, good wrists, excellent serves. Some of the best serves I've seen so far in this series. Um, so much good. And then there's also still a lot of things that you can work on. Um, so I'm just going to name the top three. Uh, number one, your transition from back end to forehand. Um, a footwork exercise that I recommend is. Uh, and, and it may seem like a beginner exercise, but it's so good for this. Two backhand, two forehand, don't take more than a step away from the table. And you have to loop everything. So two backhand loops, two forehand loops, two backhand loops, two forehand loops. You should be getting 20 in a row consistently. Um, so that's the first thing, just that transition. And when you're close to the table, back into backhand, your left leg should be forwards. When you switch to your forehand, your paddle should not drop under the table. It should stay up. Uh, second thing, short game. Um, I'd like to see you play more um, short pushes, go for more short pushes. Um, even against a topspin serve, maybe get someone to serve topspin pendulum to you. Practice dropping it short and low. Um, it's really one of those things that you just practice it for an hour every day and you won't miss. Um, it, it just naturally gets better. Um, uh, yeah, so, so it's just one of those things. Um, actually, Timo Boll, like the, the German superstar, has a really good video on um, kind of some ways you can touch short topspin serves and keep them low. So I might link that video um, on the top right of the screen now. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, and the last thing, uh, and I'm kind of losing my train of thought here. Last, last thing is the back end loop. Um, more variation in where you play. Instead of everything cross court, bang, 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 um, play some down the line, play some to the middle. Um, and then on the follow up shot, don't punch. Um, Try to try to be try to be a little bit more stable in those rallies, uh, but yeah, there are a few more things that I pointed out in the review. So like the forehand counter loop, um, I would work on that more. Maybe just a practice drill where you push long to the forehand, they loop, you keep the paddle up, you just counter loop. You should win that point nine times out of ten. Um, but yeah, um, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a DM in Discord, and I'll be happy to go over everything in more detail with you. Uh, if you're watching this and you wa have stayed this long, um, I really appreciate you. Um, because I know these are not the most exciting videos, but I do hope that they're educational. Um, but yeah, join my Discord server. It'll be in the link in the description. It'll be in the comment section. You can chat with me and some of the other members of the channel. You can send me clips. You can ask for advice. Um, and yeah, it's a good time in there. So feel free to join. Um, but that's going to do it for this video. I really appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully I have some more videos in the near future. I'm not going to guarantee that because um, my school schedule, my work schedule, um, table tennis is kind of um, in the back seat right now. But yeah, we'll see. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. Adios.